Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another Crossworld TCG video. My name is Joey. Thank you guys so, so much for uh, tuning in to click on this video and watch. I'm going to be going over my tournament report and mini deck profile for my ARG States winning Hercule deck. Here's the dope little mat. Got the champion mat. Got the Mighty Mass trick or treat in with spike and bandages and ghost tokens. And it's just such a dope looking mat. Uh, I was super stoked to be able to pull the win on this. Uh, we're going to go over my tournament report and deck profile. There's definitely a very, very strong deck to consider moving into set five. So I think it's still very relevant for you guys to check out. So I want to thank you guys again for tuning in to watch. Uh, what I do want to say before we do get into the video is that the channel has grown so much. And I want to thank you guys all so much for the incredible support you guys have given to the channel. You know, you guys reach out to me all the time in the comments on Facebook. And it's just like super duper overwhelming and, I, and I, in a good way, in the best way. And I'm super thankful for that. Uh, when I do get back from Nationals, I'm going to be hosting a box of Set 5 giveaway. Now, that is not the only thing that's going to be given away. Uh, the more and more subscribers we get by the time I get back from Nats, the bigger this uh, giveaway is going to be. And what I mean by that is there's going to be more prizes given out. Uh, we're going to do prizes for uh, first, second, third place, maybe even more uh, fourth and fifth if we get even more subscribers by the time I get back from Nats. So uh, first place, we'll be getting a box set five, and I have other prizes going out to other places. I'm talking like tournament packs. I'm talking uh, the binder from the ultimate box. Uh, I'm talking play mats whole lot of different prizes that you guys are gonna have the potential to get so definitely uh do hit that subscribe button do hit that like button share with a friend if you're new to the channel the more subscribers we get by the time i get back from nets the more prizes you guys are going to be able to win so now we'll head over to the deck profile and uh, you guys can check that out i'll talk a little bit about it i'll talk about my tournament report all right guys here we go you're gonna get my full deck list and my full side deck you're gonna get my in-depth thoughts on why i chose to play certain cards and whatnot no paywall to uh break through for this you're welcome just a little teasing, just a little fun. But uh, yeah, so tournament report, round one, I played against a friend playing announcer. I was able to win 2-0. That matchup is uh, almost like a mirror match because you, you're, the decks both draw an insane amount of cards. You know, our announcer can stay on par with Hercules' hand size. So it's almost like a pseudo mirror match, but in the end, it just comes down to Hercules' main deck cards can just do more. They're more impactful because of the fact that you're not restricted to only playing world tournaments. You get to play the best world tournaments and you don't have to clog your deck with cards that are a little bit subpar. It's always a little it's always a little bit weird putting together an announcer deck because there's so many splashful packages, which is really, really good. You can go with a chilling uh Krillin Chaozu package, you can go a green package for full power energy and different good green battle cards. But the thing with Hercule is that it just it does draw that insane amount of cards. It has a monstrous win con with Demigra. You don't ever have to charge a six energy, so you don't ever fall into a hole where you have to get hit by the Walter and Secret Rare. So that's kind of how that matchup went. Round two, I ended up going up against a Hercule Mirror match. That was pretty interesting. His build was actually a bit different than mine. He played some unconventional cards in the main deck. He played uh, some, uh, I believe, like a two or three of Super Saiyan 3 Dragon Fist. So that's pretty interesting. I guess it was another way for him to deal with big boss monsters. Um, so, but we ended up playing the mirror match. I had the yellow package sided for the mirror match specifically. You can see kind of down here, I got the yellow super combo, which I will get to when we go through the mini deck profile. But he ended up uh, not siding yellow package himself, so he didn't really have an answer to my demi -Gras when I had answered his demi -Gras. So I was able to win that match of 2-0. The yellow package is really, really clutch and really, really important in the mirror match for Hercule, and it will continue to be going forward because a lot of big bomb cards do just you know fall over into a hole to uh, crush your ball. So the yellow package is really, really good sideboarded and Kelly zone in the main deck was for the same reason it was just to not get killed by that crusher ball so i wanted to play the one in the main deck there's no one in the sideboard we'll get to later so that's how that matchup went uh third round i ended up playing against a blue green soul striker deck from a pretty good player he uh was able to take it off me 2-1 because game three went in the time that's just kind of the nature of the deck and honestly a lot of games that if it's not an aggro mirror match or if it's not one player playing aggro uh game threes are almost always gonna go to time i'm really glad that uh, nationals are going to be having a time procedure that goes to turns i think that four turns is going to be kind of a long time i i've always wondered like now and when i used to let you go back in the day if final turn would just suffice uh just turn zero for player that's a turn player when time is called so they get to finish their turn and then the opponent gets their final turn which is basically turn one from turn zero turn one and then the game is decided at that point maybe uh maybe in a draw after that maybe by highest life total maybe you're just trying to do the most damage you can in those final turns it, it, it does kind of change how you play so i don't know if it's necessarily the perfect answer but let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below i'm really curious to know what you guys think about different time procedures and and what you guys prefer uh going into draws every time is really really annoying it does get people out of events really quickly which is kind of cool i guess but i would prefer a way to finish out the game with less draws it'd be really cool but that was how round three went so at that point i was two one 
and in round four I ended up playing against an androids player I have yet to lose to androids with this deck in a match because this deck just has the ability to outplay a cell chain so so well you guys have to stall your awaken you have to hold your negates for their one drop crit gohans because you really don't want to take crit hits but even then like if they're putting big hits on you and let's say you don't have the hand to combo out of it let's say you don't have the negates for their crit gohans you can go down to four life and you could literally just sit there i'll literally sit at four life and not awaken usually until i have gotten cell chain the second time or if um if i haven't demigra at that point but if i had demigra before that at any point i had demigra i know i'm back in control of the game because you just rip their cell chain pieces out of their hand they realistically have to draw back into three cards to cell chain you so not really a big possibility there anytime you draw into beyond dark semi in the cell chain matchup you rip their hand apart you make them uh you show them how it feels to kind of rip someone's hand apart and how kind of frustrating that can be so that's just your win con in that matchup game two is kind of funny I, again in the, against cell chain player i had to uh, win the game without awakening because i the game had dragged on so long I, it took me so long to get to demi gras that uh at the finishing blow i was at about like three or four cards left in deck so i actually had to win the game unawakened which is pretty interesting so um, that happened that was pretty cool so that was the four rounds we had for the ARG states. Then we cut to a top four cut. I ended up making fourth place. So uh, top cut round one. So I was fourth playing the first seed. I was playing against an Androids player again, a different Androids player this time, but more of the same. Uh, Demi Gras was the win con. You just literally saw the awake until you hit Demi Gras. Then you're able to do that because this deck is ultra defensive. So I won that game. And then in the finals of ARG States, I actually played the blue green Soul Striker player again. And this time the match went so differently. I kind of skipped over a little bit of how the matchup went, but I'll go back to it. So in Swiss, it was actually a really rough matchup because he had the Mafubas for a lot of my big boss monsters. He had his Kami's Power Piccolo and Annie Laza. Annie Laza actually does hurt this deck a little bit because by the time you're ready to make your big plays, they have had the opportunity to set up two Annie Lazas, potentially maybe three, but even one can be a little bit of a hindrance to your plays. And that's uh, a lot of points in Swiss when I played this guy. Dropping the Beyond Dark Zemigra felt really, really bad because he just had the Kami's power to clean it up. So I was gonna be able to clean up his hand one time, punch into a Vegito that was gonna get negated. And he was gonna be able to clear the, Demi the Demigra, my big play with his Kami's power Piccolo. So dropping uh, Beyond Dark Zemigra into the Piccolo never felt particularly good. But luckily uh, in the finals of States, it went by very quickly. I was able to win 2-0 because he was not able to see his awakening pieces in both games. It's just a very slow deck when you can't hit your awakeners. And unlike Awakening Talent Pan, the one drop crit go on is not a very reliant awakener because it doesn't recycle itself. Anytime you summon it and attack with it, it's just vulnerable to getting killed. So I never really put swings on him. I was able to get into my own at all cost Vegeta's so that I could awaken myself before I was able to give him any cards to awaken himself. And in both those games, I learned from game one that Demigra necessarily wasn't the way to go. I learned that against the blue green soul striker matchup and probably against the mono blue soul striker matchup as well that you just play for shrouded playing for foo shrouded literally won me the game i was able to establish a board between tesla strengths and gokus between oobs between the awkward situation package and all that good stuff i was able to establish a board he wasn't able to awaken and then once i was ready to i put him at five life with some crit hits with oob and whatnot and once i was able to go for game i threw one vegeto and maybe like an Alaza or something like that. I dropped the Fu Shrouded and was able to break through his Vegito and go for game that way in both games. So I ended up winning ARG states that way. That was pretty dope. So we'll go through a quick rush of the deck profile. Hercule, you guys know what he does. Great leader. He's going to still continue to be great in set five. And then we have the one minus Killy Zone. Kind of mentioned it. It was for the Crusher Ball. I didn't want to. I didn't want Demigra to fall into a ditch. So I played the one of Killy Zone. It also just helps your black count for Demigra. You're going to cast this in any game you see it. Realistically, you're just going to get rid of your non-black cards in the drop area and get that extra black card in the drop area for the summon of Demigra. Then we have the four and four announcer package. So I'm a big fan of four and four. A lot of people play four play by play pro because he's the best one definitely, and they only play three ever curious. I don't ever want to get stalled in Awakening. I've won too many Hercule Mirror matches by stalling my opponent's Awaken because they just could not see Pan in the early game. So I definitely did not want to fall into a ditch in that regard. So I played the four Ever Curious to search out my Pans, which were also at a four of. And for my utility overall package, we had the one Mass Sand, the one Mirror Creator, and the uh, Fu Shrouded. So we upped the black count with the Killy Zone and the Ever uh, Announcer Ever Curious. So I was able to cut Scientist Fu. Scientist Fu was always really underwhelming in this deck because your deck draws so much anyway. And 
literally all these cards are infinitely better finishers in their respective matchups scientist Fu can help you maybe recover from cell chain but your leader does that effectively if you know how to play around it like i kind of gave you guys the examples on how to do so the one mass sand is, is really helpful for pushing through things like announcer uh in particular because you're able to kind of just clear all their one drops they lose a whole ton of combo power 5 10 15 20 25 they lose 25k combo power just by you dropping a mass sand into their board of one drops which is huge so it's really big in that matchup mirror creator absorb can win games on its own against really anything it can't fall into a dish to crusher ball which is really nice and against certain matchups like storm in particular when you're going to be compressed down to playing like by turn three you have to win you can drop the mirror creator absorb when they put themselves down to their last light life or two and you just swing with it they are probably not going to be able up for a negate unless they played around it really well and that's going to guarantee the game right there Fu Shrouded, like I said, incredibly good in the Soul Striker matchup, and also particularly good in the mirror match, depending on what happens with your Demigra plays. If you can't get your Demigra, Fu Shrouded is a great backup call. Demigra, incredible card, gonna continue to be incredible in set five. Then we have the four Zeno button, so standard, typical blue stuff, the Sensu Bean. Four Awakening Talent Pan, I do not want to get stalled in my Awaken. I've won too many games, like I said, uh, by stalling my opponent's Awaken. That was a very, very big way to win the game in set two. And that still carries over to certain matchups in set in set four and probably will still carry over to set five depending on what leaders see a lot of play if your opponent can't get that explosive card draw especially in the mirror match or in like a soul striker matchup you you just clean up because you start to build a board they can't deal with and then you just go for game uh awkward situation package just deals with big guys really really good uh the one mafuba on the main board i was afraid of certain things like dragon fist like vegeto i know that soul striker is really popular in my area so i wanted to have the one on the main board two more on the side uh, now we'll scroll down a bit. There's so much, so much different stuff jam packed into this deck. The three Goku, three Oob, really good at just removing generic stuff. Incredibly good in the Android matchup. The situation play is really good for the Android matchup too, so remove the cell. But the Goku Oob package is really good when they're trying to span the board with like crit attackers or the Energy Guard Android 17. So really good there. Two auto cost Vegeta. I didn't really play much of this card. I think I played a one of in my other Hercule list. But now that I'm playing the yellow package, this card is just so so good with battering laser so playing it at a two of was really justified and it was able to get me to awaken i didn't have to swing at them like i did with pan so i didn't have to ever awaken my opponent if i wanted to awaken and i saw they were playing uh they were being slow rolled by their own deck basically they couldn't draw into their awakening pieces two hidden power supreme kai that's helped me go for games so many times like even with the hercule leader swinging just like attack draw a card combo double strike turn your double strike into a super combo it's the nuts then we have the eight super combos here just the reason why hercule is so insane because in Hercule, your super combo is draw two. So those are the nuts for that reason. Side deck, one more Killy Zone. Uh, the yellow package for Hercule, there's only one other Hercule player at the shop, and he was not playing a yellow package in his sideboard, so this wasn't really that important. Although, I do wish I played three Kronoa, not because I uh, ran into any Shugesh decks or anything like that, but because I do like deciding Kronoa in the mirror match because it just digs deeper for Demigra and it's just more combo power, uh, more black combo power that you can fuel for Demigra. And your other overall plays aren't really as relevant except for like Science Spoo. So the Minus Killy Zone basically acted as the third copy of Kronoa in those matchups. Still played through Kronoa, Wander respects you guess. didn't want to get blown out by that card. Then we had the Haru Haru at two. I wish I could have played three because I did end up playing against two Android decks. And there was a Victory Strike deck floating around that luckily I didn't have to face. But I uh, was only able to fit two because I wanted to fit other stuff in the side deck. Three would have been great though. Two Mafuba, again, for like the Soul Striker decks, there were some Soul Striker, Soul Striker decks floating around the tournament, and this came in every single time against those for the Vegitos. Uh, in my case, I played against a blue-green Soul Striker, so it came in against Annie Lazas, came in against Dragon Fists, things like that. The three Unyielding Defender, East Supreme Kai, for the Victory Strike that I never played, but had to have it because it's one of the deck's toughest matchups. But I do play a whole lot of Awakening tools, so I don't get blown out by that deck as easily. Two Battering Laser, three Crusher Ball, this is some of the best yellow you can side realistically. It clunks the deck on extra cards, which kind of sucks, but Hercule can filter through the deck so efficiently that it doesn't necessarily matter. So early game, you're just gonna charge a battering laser, your crush balls are gonna be live. Any of your big uh, threats that your opponent drops on you is gonna fall into a ditch, which is really good, especially in the mirror match. So guys, that's the Hercule deck profile. And I think that something similar to this can be strong going forward in set five. Definitely tinker around with it. See what you guys come up with. And thank you guys again so much for watching. Once again, please do share this video with a friend. Do hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel because that is going to get you guys more prizes for the Set 5 giveaway. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Joey. I'll see you next time.